guys, it's Twitter on Maxwell, back again with another WWE Updates video. This time, instead of doing 19 straight shows in a G1-like format, we have a one-off 16-man tournament where 16 of the top WWE guys will compete in the WWE World Grand Prix. 26 segments, it's a lot of matchups, but we could have some of the best matchups and the best wrestlers around in the world of wrestling. We've got a nearly 400-minute show here. And we have a little cameo from the tag teams. We have a showcase of our women's tag teams as well. And we also will have some of our competitors from the Cruiserweight division having a match-up as well. But this hopefully can build up where we're going towards uh, with Survivor Series, which will be next week's video, and maybe planting some seeds for some future feuds down the line. So we'll kick on with the World Grand Prix 2018. As always guys, thanks for watching and let me know what you think of today's episode. Let's jog on with the show. So we start the show with Braun Strowman who comes out, our WWE Champion. And a bit of a shock swerve, he laughs and just says, I'm too good for this tournament, I have absolutely nothing to prove, I'm the champ, I'm out, I want nothing to do with this. So straight away a Braun Strowman promo, just showing how dominant he is, just saying, you know, I don't need this, I'm already the champ. I'm taking the night off. These guys can just fight for the right to face me one day. So an A-star 100, show off to a strong start. Crowd gets hotter. Big Braun delivers. Our opening first round match was an exceptional matchup that saw Daniel Bryan defeat Baron Corbin in 20 minutes and 7 by pinfall, following a distraction from The Undertaker. A disappointing B-77, I expect because of the lack of a storyline towards this matchup. It got the crowd hotter, both men with a 94 performance. The Dead Wolf storyline gained a bit of heat between him and Taker. Baron Corbin gained some t skills as well. And yep, the low heat in the Dead Wolf storyline, the lack of a hot associated storyline as well, I would probably say would have dropped this from what I would believe would have been a stellar matchup. So, disappointing, but you're going to get these kind of matchups across the line. I must say, decent rating 46,766 here in attendance at Lansdowne Road. In Ireland, so decent, decent matchup. Could have been better, but Daniel Bryan advances to the second round. And after the matchup, Undertaker decides he's going to chase off Baron Corbin. As we all know, these two are going to lock heads at Survivor Series. Not sure of the stipulation just as yet. I've got two weeks to build that. But Corbin wants revenge on the Undertaker as Corbin pushes forward. Of course, the Money in the Bank holder, and Corbin came out of it looking excellent in their storyline. Gained some heat in a B plus 86 rated segment. So, pretty happy with that. Our next first round match had great wrestling and good heat, and it saw the Miz defeat Apollo Crews in the 11.54 with the skull crushing finale. A B81. Miz with a better performance than Apollo Crews. No skill improvements, and this was capped because of the short match length. Again, just really giving the Miz a good win into the second round. Next up, we also had a match that had superb wrestling and great heat, and it saw Kevin Owens defeat Cesaro in 14-18 with a package pile driver. Again, a B81 because of the lack of associated storyline. Cesaro slowed down by his injury. He got an 87. KO went 84. Well, a good performance from Kevin Owens. And as I say, this was capped as well. So again, the ratings won't be too good. And if these were a few, it would be a lot better. Next up, we've got Bo Dallas cutting a promo for his matchup against Dolph Ziggler. These two rivals have drawn against each other in the first round. And A-Star 100, it just shows how the positive uh, backing behind Bo Dallas, believing in Bo, has got him these kind of ratings and he's been simply outstanding. Of course, being John Cena's prodigy in this probably helps as well. The match between Bo Dallas and Ziggler was a match that had great wrestling and good heat. And it was a draw. A 20 minute draw when the time limit expired and the judges ruled out a draw. Neither man advances. A stellar A90 matchup between Dolph Ziggler and Bo Dallas. Great performance from both. But their storyline loses a little heat. Bo Dallas improves on Rumble skills. But delighted with that. And as I say, it means a bye for Kevin Owens. Next up, we had our female matchup. Which was a case of we made it the storytelling match as well. And it was about they had some decent wrestling but didn't have much heat. And the tag team of Fire and Might, Dana Brooke and Becky Lynch, defeated Billy Kay and Peyton Royce 
in 10-14 when Dana Brooke defeated Billy Kay by pinfall with a Samoan driver, and it was the fifth defence of the Women's Shine Tag Team Championships. Just really something where we can get Dana Brooke over and at the same time use Becky Lynch while she's still recovering from her injury. But a good matchup there considering the um, storytelling matchup. Peyton Royce improving technical skills. Possibly could have maybe made, made that into a 76 77 rated match, but a good showing for the fire and might. Back to first round action, and it was about that had some great wrestling and good heat, and it was Bray Wyatt who defeated Sami Zayn in 1633 by pinfall with a standing centre on Splash, following a distraction from the Intercontinental Champion, Kenny Omega. So a B plus 86 is pretty decent. Both men were a good performance. Bray tiring in a 16 minute match though is worrying. And the Iron Man storyline advances. You have to wonder, you know, how we could improve Bray Wyatt's stamina. Do I keep putting him in these long enduring matches? Or do I just accept Bray's never going to be one for a long match? Next up we've got a promo from Roman Reigns, A Star 100. He's just saying he's going to dominate this. He's going to beat Randy Orton. He's going to pin the champion. And then he's going to get himself title shot, win the title, and just prove to be the guy. And the match between Randy and Roman Reigns, as to be expected, was fantastic because they're in a feud. And it was about they had sensational wrestling, fantastic heat. Roman defeats Randy in 1832 by pinfall because you've got to make Roman look strong. A93, fantastic. Both men are a great rating. Randy Orton is getting stale. The storyline between these two guys continues. And Roman Reigns is into the second round. Next up, in a superb matchup, we had John Cena defeat Zack Sabre Jr. in 1706 by pinfall with an AA. A B81, no storyline between these two, but a great performance from Sabre Jr. with a 92, Cena with an 86. But it just shows it's not quite Zack Sabre Jr.'s time. John Cena, as I say, defending champion, he's looking to go two in a row. Lack of associated storyline did cost us a good bit, as did the short matchup as well. That could have been a bit longer. Could Cena and Zack Sabre Jr. produce something in the 90s? It's possible. But Cena into round two. And next up was an exceptional matchup, and it was Dean Ambrose defeating AJ Styles in 1745 with a headlock driver. Dean Ambrose advancing to round two, a B plus 88. Good matchups there, good ratings. AJ185, considering he's slowly going down a bit because of his declining physical ability. So we may need to start dropping AJ Styles down the card. It's a shame that's the way it's going to go for AJ, but with age comes a decline in stats, unfortunately. So Dean Ambrose into round two. We've then got a promo between Seth and Triple H. It's just a case of Seth Rollins is pissed that he's not been put in this tournament. And he believes it's an agenda by Triple H and the authority. So Seth Rollins, Triple H, they have a bit of an argument. These two will come to a head at the Survivor Series when Seth gets rid of Triple H from his life once and for all. A star, 100, and it gained a bit of heat on the storyline. Next up was our tag team Fatal 4-Way. It was a decent matchup that saw the Britannic greatness of Drew Galloway and uh, Wade Barrett in this series, sorry. Great, <laughs> he's not still, he's Wade. Uh, defeating Red Dragon, American Wolves in the Hate Empire in 1636. When Drew Galloway defeated Bobby Fish by pinfall with a Future Shock DDT. Solid B82. Drew Galloway with the worst performance of the 63. Jimmy Havoc with 62. But we're hoping these are the kind of guys we can push over in the future and get their in ring performances up and get their overness up. Um, outstanding performance from both the Wolves and credit to Marty Scurll. Yeah, a 78 rated performance. Few skill improvements. Very few negatives, but overall good showing for one half of our tag team division. Next up, Enzo Amore gets the host his own show because he's a certified G and a bona fide stud because Chris Jericho is suspended so we couldn't use him. And he has a highlight, oh, I was going to say highlight reel, he has just some sort of segment, guest speaking segment with Crazy Mary Dobson and the, the Raw Wounds champion Alexa Bliss. Have a discussion over their matchup that's going to happen at Survivor Series. And the two of them get into each other, start bitching about each other, and it sends into a brawl. But I thought we're not really using Enzo. Jericho is suspended. 
So let's create Enzo's little show. So we just keep doing this to get Enzo some good ratings. Uh, obviously going to have the gift of gab and top, as I say, big skills. So hopefully he can benefit both ladies uh, in this segment. So it'll be 80 and hopefully a good matchup to follow at the Survivor Series. Next up, in an exceptional matchup, we had Daniel Bryan defeat The Miz in 1827 by submission with Cattle Mutilation. Bringing back the old moves. A94, anything with The Miz and Daniel Bryan in it is gold. Their feud's over, but they had a matchup obviously in this. As I say, just this little way of telling this story. Bryan is into the next round. The Raw Chamber storyline has advanced with this segment. And as I say, both of these men will be competing in that. Big matchup, A94, if that was a little bit longer, maybe could have broken an 95. I meant 94, not 94, 84, sorry, but great from these two. Next up, an exceptional matchup with Roman Reigns defeating Bray Wyatt in 1805 by Pinfall. A B81, no real storyline here, and a lack of psychology definitely cost the match as both guys had a good performance. Bray continuing to tire again, and the lack of psychology, and the hot storyline. Probably drops this from probably I'd say a 90 matchup. But Roman Reigns into the next round, Daniel Bryan into the next round, Kevin Owens is into the next round because of the bye between Bo Dallas and Dolph Ziggler. Who's going to join them? And it was a match that was fantastic heat and great wrestling, just a disappointing rating. And it was John Cena who beat Dean Ambrose in 1828 with a roll up, a B79. So heel John Cena wins. A poor performance from Cena with an 82, compared to Dean Ambrose's 94, so that's quite worrying. No skill improvements, and a lack of hot associated storyline, stamina, and declining physical ability hampered John Cena, who's just got one more match to go through, and it's only against Roman Reigns. Next up, we had a match that had some good wrestling and a decent reaction from the crowd, and it saw Kenny Omega defeat. Manny Andrade in 1612 with Cross Raff, following interference from King Neville, the new cruiserweight champion. Just to say, to put the title on him on SmackDown. So, yep, Neville is your champion again, or the king of the cruiserweights. But a B78, 77 from Andrade, and 81 from Kenny, not his best performance. Um, no negatives here, but overall, good showing and gets a couple of feuds across. So, disappointingly, in a bout that had fantastic heat and great wrestling, John Cena defeats Roman Reigns in 1832 by pinfall with an attitude adjustment following botched interference from Dean Ambrose. A B-77, Reigns has got a gimmick that's getting stale, Cena's off his game, a 96 from Roman Reigns, a 76 from John Cena, so I think he's just struggling with the amount of um, matchups we're giving John, and he's got one more, he's in the final. As this might be offering too much for John Cena, pretty much having to wrestle an hour worth of matches. Still in advances, but lost heat, so we'll have to build that heat back up on uh, on SmackDown. Stamina, inconsistency, Cena's fatigued as well, and the booking decisions hamper this matchup, so we have to keep Roman looking strong, and John Cena is in the final. Next up, we've got a promo with Kevin Owens. He just says, I'm nice and fresh. Daniel Bryan's been through a couple of grueling matches. So it's going to be obvious that Kevin Owens is going to beat the crap out of Daniel Bryan, beat the crap out of John Cena, and become the World Grand Prix champion. But it was an exceptional matchup, and it saw Daniel Bryan defeat Kevin Owens in 1946 by submission with another cattle mutilation. So Daniel wins uh, by submission. A92, fantastic ratings from these two guys. The Raw Chamber matchup gained a bit of heat. As I say, only negative is Corey Graves, but a good matchup between these two. And as I say, Daniel Bryan will now face John Cena to become the winner of the World Grand Prix. After this, Kevin Owens is obviously pissed off that he's been eliminated by Daniel Bryan, so he decides to beat the crap out of Bryan, surely creating a path for John Cena to go on and win, like I said, A-Star 100, Kevin Owens came across as a star. The Raw Chamber storyline has continued. Is this pointing at something in the future? Who knows? 
And our main event match, absolutely fantastic. John Cena, when he had to show it, definitely done it. It was a bout that had fantastic heat and great wrestling. And Daniel Bryan defeated John Cena in 23-47 by submission with the yes lock. Still, it says no lock. He did it with the yes lock. Daniel Bryan wins the 2018 WWE World Grand Prix Championship. So, in 96, fantastic. Bryan in 85. John Cena with a 75, because he's obviously completely fatigued now. Um, yep, his fatigue, declining physical ability, stamina and inconsistency. Probably drops this from being a 97 or even a 98. But Daniel Bryan picks up the win. The underdog playing the most matchups, just winning by submission and no more. And we end the show with the crowd going wild. Daniel Bryan going yes, yes, yes. And a B plus 88 to celebrate him winning this can we call it a prestigious tournament? And overall, Daniel Brown was slightly overused, although he is a main eventer, so we'd like to have thought we could use him for as long as possible. But the show got a fantastic A94 and it increased their popularity in the 31 region. So it shows you the main event is strong, although it is kind of dominated by some guys that maybe we should be pushing down the card, the likes of John Cena, Daniel Bryan. Not the edge is not on their side, but it does show the future could be bright with Bo Dallas, Kenny Omega, and the whole members of the Shield and Kevin Owens. So definitely in a good place. I mean, it's something like Braun who can open the show with a 100. It shows definitely from a sports entertainment perspective, a promo perspective, we're doing well. Maybe not so much in the matches, but we can look to improve that. In terms of well done's, I think your three yeses to Daniel Bryan. Oh, Dallas, Dolph Ziggler. So Daniel was pre pleased, Bo Dallas was pleased, and so was Dolph. So overall, I felt that was a, a success. It's going to lead us into Survivor Series and two big Elimination Chamber matches for our main events. Civil look here, Mark Briscoe heading for injury. Civil look here, it was another wild at the weekend. John Cena needs a break. To be fair though, John Cena, I'll probably keep him out of action now. Because he's on Raw, um, we'll probably keep him out of action. Still over as hell, but we'll keep him there until probably just keep him off until Survivor Series. TNA had turning point in 2018. They drew 8,000. MVP becoming the world champ after defeating Manic. And our show got fantastic reviews. And they've also given Nia Jax a new contract. And also we're going to bring in Ty Gillinger from NXT up to the main roster. We'll give him a, a short push because of his age. Daniel Bryan, growing schedule, so he'll take a break after the Grand Prix. We've done it on pay-per-view, so that's a 5.06, just to make a bit of money off of it. And Drew Galloway talks well, says John Cena. But overall, as I say, a lot of morale issues. Wow, um, that's when you don't book a lot of guys on the pay-per-view. Oh, that's maybe old issues catching up. Let's see Ember Moon. Yep, irritated at being left off the World Grand Prix. So I've got a lot of morale to fix before I carry on with this. But as I say, overall, I was happy with the tournament. We made a good bit of money. Um, 50 million off pay-per-view, which is great, considering I still got another pay-per-view to run. Survivor Series in two weeks' time, so we'll hopefully we'll get a good rating from that. But as I say, size is looking good. There's no real pressure to get size to an elite level. Um, it's just about making good stories happen, pushing the talents, and, and having fun. But that's it for this episode, guys. If you see any comments, I'll deeply appreciate it. Like, subscriptions as well. Uh, as I say, if you want to give us any thoughts on the tournament, if you felt the right man won, um, if you depict 16 guys from my roster, who would you pick? Or if you depict 16 guys from your own rosters, and who would you have winning this kind of tournament? Did you prefer the idea of a one night tournament better than the 19 episodes last year, which maybe dragged out um, a little bit too long? And, guys, of course, we are closing in on the one year anniversary, maybe a month or so off of one year of TW. Well, if you guys can let me know, as I say, how you found the game, do you feel it's still as fresh with the mods that are available? And if I'm right in saying this should be out on the day of WrestleMania. So guys, if it is to be the case, if this is released on the day of WrestleMania, enjoy. I don't actually know when this is gonna be scheduled. Maybe do a little thing where I do a couple of videos and lead up to it. And um, we'll see how much time I get off before WrestleMania. So Hey, who knows? WrestleMania might be four days down the line. We might have a few videos in a row coming up. So, who knows? I'll see how I feel. 
I say, guys, thanks always for watching. It's deeply appreciated. If you watched the video and you enjoyed it and you don't have the game, there's a free demo available on the Grey Dog software website. The game's 25 quid. Um, you can get, as I say, try out two months worth of gameplay in January and February. You can use a real world mod or you can use the Cornellverse, which is the fictional database within the game. And if you want to get involved in the YouTube side of things, you can get involved, guys. All you need is the game, OBS. It's as simple as that. And the great places to see other people's content, whether written or YouTube, is definitely the Fantasy Bookers subreddit. So thanks as always for watching, guys. It's been a pleasure. I'm now going to try and book solid two weeks of proper intense wrestling. Going to get the morale of the camp up. A lot of guys that haven't been used. A lot of the people you see with these issues will probably leave as well down the line when their contracts expire. But it's all about us having the best Survivor Series possible. Jumping in to Armageddon and TLC. And then it's Mania season. We'll have a run-up of the full roster. We'll have the awards, the top 500. We'll jump into the Rumble. We'll go in the fast lane to WrestleMania. We'll go to No Way Out. And then it is WrestleMania. But until next time, guys, this is 21 Maxwell. I'll see you, hopefully, for the Survivor Series. Who's going to survive? Or too big? Elimination Chamber matches. Till then, this is Twitter on Maxwell. See you soon. Bye bye.